What's happening, Sports Rehab Experts? Greg Shively here with SportsRehabExpert.com, and today we're going to be coming at you with our top five shoulder carry variations to improve shoulder strength and resiliency, as well as improve range of motion. It's that third quality, improving shoulder range of motion, that is often an afterthought when it comes to doing or performing any type of farmer's walks or carry variation inside the gym. We can improve our shoulder range of motion simultaneously while also performing carries, loaded carries to improve our strength and resiliency. So be sure to stick around for all five of those carry variations and the mistake that I used to make in the clinic and in the gym when programming for clients. But before we get into those, be sure to subscribe, like, hit that alert button so you get notified for any time we come out with a new video, which happens on a weekly basis. Now, what I want you to consider when programming carries for your clients is that we don't have to go with the heaviest carry possible. We can go with a lighter load and focus more on strength endurance while also focusing on some coordination aspects that's going to improve someone's shoulder range of motion. So my mistake early on in my career was to always program carries with the intent of uh, improving maximum strength. We don't need to always do that. Now, certainly if that is your intent, that's perfectly fine. But what I want you to consider is the slight difference in this farmer carry that is, is probably going unnoticed to you right now, which is the swinging of the arm and what is happening at the sternum. So when we look at this video closely, most people when they perform a farmer's walk, they'll keep their arm right at their side, they'll keep it very, very rigid instead of swinging their arm loosely as I'm showing in this video. Furthermore, if you look at someone's sternum when they're performing a farmer's walk, the sternum generally faces straight ahead and there's no rotation. And this is the key to this exercise, which will actually improve someone's shoulder range of motion in internal rotation, specifically with this carry, is with the arm at the side, the dumbbell is locking this humerus into a certain position. And then while swinging the arm slightly across the body and allowing for the sternum to slightly rotate back and forth, we are moving the rib cage and the scapula around a fixed humerus. This creates more variability, in particular in shoulder internal rotation for a standard farmer's walk at your side. If you had a kettlebell available to you, the kettlebell handle lends its hand to biasing the humerus into an internal rotation position as opposed to the dumbbell, which the, the dumbbell heads make it a little bit awkward carrying it at your side to hold the palm in a pronated position. But with a kettlebell, we can hold the palm in a pronated position, which biases the humus in internal rotation, and then allowing the off arm to swing and the sternum to rotate back and forth with that to provide some variability to the scapula with a fixed humerus to improve shoulder internal rotation with this specific movement. All right, so that was for shoulder internal rotation, a bottoms up carry with the elbow reaching forward and the arm at about 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. This is going to improve shoulder external rotation. Now I'm showing this variation for a particular reason because this is how I used to program it with two kettlebells in each arm. Again, my intent was to always prove strength, capacity, and control in this position, never considering the consequences for shoulder external rotation. So if we perform this with one arm, that allows us to, again, keep the opposite arm moving freely and create that arm swing just like the last video and allow the sternum to rotate and the scapula to move around a fixed humerus. If this bottoms up carry, we are holding the humerus into external rotation or an external rotation bias and then allowing the scapula to move back and forth and the rib cage to move back and forth around it. Whereas with the standard farmer's walk with the dumbbell at the side with the wrist pronated, ideally, that's going to bias the individual into more internal rotation for improving internal rotation while improving shoulder strength, endurance and capacity. Next up, or the third exercise, is a front rack carry. Now I want you to dis disregard the kettlebell in the opposite arm. Again, when we're programming this, instead of always focusing on maximum strength, think about what you can do with the off arm. That off arm should be swinging and we should allow the sternum to rotate and we need to utilize a weight that allows us to coordinate that movement as opposed to utilize such a high threshold strategy that a maximum strength carry would require. 
But this leads me right into the fourth carry variation. If we are going to try to improve maximum strength, this is one of the carry variations that I like to do and like to go a little bit heavier with because one side is biasing external rotation, the other side is biasing more internal rotation. So we're getting this alternating and reciprocal action from a standpoint of how we're holding our humerus but from a standpoint of uh, walking, we're not gonna get a ton of rotation because again, we're maximizing um, weight in this, this regard. Uh, you certainly could go with lesser weight here, but um, again, when you watch someone perform this, the sternum in the rib cage isn't going to be moving all too much. Um, so this would be a nice maximum carry variation. Now, again, I'm not against performing unilateral carries or bilateral heavy carries for maximum strength gains. I'm just saying we need to focus on our intent and what qualities do the client need to maximize their health and well-being. In some cases, that may be maximum strength. In other cases, that might mean more strength endurance and range of motion gains for that particular individual. Now last up is a chaos carry. Now I put this one in here because I think it can be useful, but most people when they perform this, you'll see wild and crazy things. You'll see people using large jump stretch bands. You'll see all sorts of positions that they hold their arm into. You'll see them using barbells and multiple kettlebells. We don't need to get wild and crazy with this chaos carry. Uh, a lot of times all that you're doing is just adding more uniqueness to the exercise. You're not actually adding value to the activity. Sure, you could argue that you're providing some type of stability training with it, but realistically, stability training is control in the presence of change, and not much is actually changing here other than the distraction emphasis of the band that it's creating at the shoulder. From a humerus standpoint, from a shoulder girdle, scapula, rib cage standpoint, again, you can see a lot of times when people form this carry, the opposite arm is going to be out wide and it's going to be rigid. The rib cage is rigid, the sternum is not moving, and the whole tor entire torso is not moving in a gait reciprocal alternating like fashion. We're creating rigidity, and that's not actually allowing any type of control to occur in the presence of change. All that we're doing is creating a lot of stiffness and rigidity in one particular posture. And that's exactly what will happen when someone performs a maximum carry. So again, just realize what happens when you change your intent of the activity. I'm not saying that performing a maximum carry is bad or a chaos carry is bad, but once you start seeing someone perform a carry and rigidity and tension starts to coming into the system, you're probably going to actually steal range of motion. So something that I would consider doing is doing a test and retest after these different things. We've talked about different exercises that improve shoulder internal rotation, improve shoulder external rotation, and how maximum carries probably are not going to change that range of motion. So go back to the table, do your test and retest. And again, if your intent is to also improve range of motion while improving muscular strength, endurance, and capacity, then some of these variations we've talked about today are going to be beneficial for you. If your intent is to pro provide maximum strength, then yes, you're going to utilize more of a rigid posture to perform that task. So keep that in mind as you're performing chaos carries or any type of carries. So if we're going back to the main theme of today's video, which is improving shoulder variability while improving muscular strength and endurance, we would want to utilize a load that allows the individual to still swing the arm freely and allow the sternum to rotate naturally to provide that variability to the scapula with a fixed humerus while adding the added distraction and perturbation that is occurring by using a jump stretch band attached to a kettlebell.